Um, West Side Chipper asks, can Rick explain the different parts to forgiveness? You want me to do the forgiveness one again? All right. What time is it, baby? 8.30? Oh, yeah. It's early. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, you may both. Um, tell them what it's about and then jump into it because it is pretty great. All right. So here's the thing. And this this is where people keep asking about, like, if somebody cheated on me or if um, if I'm trying to forgive somebody for something that they did or if somebody hurt me, how do I forgive them? So I wrote down the steps to forgiveness. For those of you who want like a good lesson here, not aside from just the stuff we just did for like what your belief systems are for how you do your goal setting or how you find your purpose in life. Let's go ahead and do it. Phil likes this. We'll go deep. Phil. <laughs> Philip, we'll go deep. Bud. All right. So let's go in. This is for couples. This is for training. Efforts. I'm keep my eye on the questions too, so he All can right. answer more when he's done. All right, here's the answer, guys. Just kidding. This is all, all right. his writing, all his thoughts. All right, so when people ask me, how do I forgive and how do I get through cheating? <clears throat> here's what I've broken down. Let's just be real, okay? I'm going to be real for you guys for a second here. When it comes to people who are married or in relationships, there are promises and there are vows. For those of you who think cheating is the only way to break your vow, read your vows again. I promise to love you, honor you, respect you, cherish you, be loyal to you in, in, in good times and bad times, sickness and in health. Pay attention. There's a lot more promises than just I'm not going to hump someone else. But you were humping a bunch of people before, so slow down on some things. Let's go into it. Cheating is not about the at, but it's about the broken promise. Just like breaking the vows to honor somebody or to love somebody or to cherish them or to respect them. It's a promise that is broken. To let go of this broken promise takes forgiveness. Well, what is needed for forgiveness? Acceptance, trust, and there's a choice on the other side. There's atonement, recognizing that the mistake was made and then making a new agreement. So, that means the power comes from choice. Indecision is the most uncomfortable you will be. This is the most uncomfortable always. When you're in the what should I do, what should I do, what should I do, and making no choices, it's going to be just misery being in limbo. So, let's go through the steps to forgive. If you're taking notes, this is where you take notes. First, you have to acknowledge, and this means fully identify the, the mistake that was made, the damage that's done. This is awareness, not shame. What happened? This is what happened. Next, recognize to seek to understand what the lesson is to learn and the impact that this, this has made on others. When you see, I made a mistake and I learned from this mistake that I don't ever want to repeat this again. This was something that I make mistakes. Okay. Next is the acceptance phase. You have to go through the stages of acceptance to understand what has happened. It has already happened. The past can no longer hurt you. It's just your feelings that you have around the broken promise. When it goes to acceptance, you do have to go through the phases. There's denial. There's bargaining. There's anger and there's sadness. You go through these phases to get to the part where accepting, okay, this has happened. We both agree. Then you get to the important part. There has to be a new set of agreements. There has to be new agreements made. This means you renew promises with a full understanding, a new standard. This means also... What is the consequence to breaking this vows? Which means, I'm not mad, but if you choose to talk to another person after you said, I'm never going to break this again, the answer is, I leave. So, if you choose to start DMing some other guy or DMing some other girl, that means you want me to go. And that's what will happen. So, we agree on both sides. We're not going to do that or else this isn't for us. We don't respect each other's boundaries or our agreements. So a consequence that you agree matches your values. 
Next up, there's that choice, which comes down to the golden rules and the standards for trust. All choices are simple. Not easy. Simple. At the end of the day, the choice is, are you going to trust or not? Some people take a very long time to make that decision. But are you going to trust or not? If you're going to, then you do. And if you're not, then you don't. But it's the choice that you make. And then there's the grace period. This means the benefit of the doubt, and you don't bring up the past, you just pay attention to what's happening, because there is a time frame to go, are you doing behaviors that you said you were not going to do again? If people start making the same patterns and the same mistakes and doing the same things that you agreed, if you do them, that means you don't want to be together with me, you made a choice. And that means we're not together. I don't have to be mad at you for that. You just make terrible choices, and I can't invest more time into that. It's not going to work for me, not going to work for you, and we have the most valuable resource that we have in our existence tied up with each other, which is our time. And I'm not going to waste any more with you. Thank you for showing me the value of your character. Now, for those of you who are wondering, on these steps here, there's six steps, on those six steps, where does it go wrong? Why is it so hard? Let's go through things that make it go wrong. If you add any of these steps, it's going to fuck the whole thing up. So let's go through it. If somebody's in denial, denial would be refusing to admit that this has happened. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to bring it up again. I refuse to, to, to acknowledge it. And they leave it completely unfinished. No closure. Let's just pretend like it never happened. None of the forgiveness can happen. If blame comes into the, the picture, well, I only did it because you did this. And I wouldn't have to do it if you didn't. And it's your fault that I even did it in the first place. If you would have done more of this, I wouldn't have to do this. You can't grow forward if you're adding blame. The justifications, when they're like, well, here's the thing that I did and why I did it, so it's okay that I did what I did, and you should just be okay with it because my reason is good enough for me to feel okay with myself. Nope. Can't go through forgiveness if you're justifying why it's okay that you did what you did because now you're going to give yourself the reason to continue. You can't make an agreement if they're justifying that they did the right thing. Won't work. Deflection. This is when they turn the tables and bring up something about you. Where you go, that was really not cool. Let's work on the agreement. They're like, you know what wasn't cool? When you did this shit last year at uh, Thanksgiving. That wasn't cool. <laughs> totally. And remember when you talked to my mom and you said this? That wasn't cool. And you remember your friend from high school? Not cool. Too much. And you're like, yeah. Can we get to the actual topic here? By the way, that argument that argument file is called stacking. When people keep adding all these different topics on there, it's a mess. It's not good. Next is anger. If you add anger to the forgiveness steps, it's going to be hard to rebuild trust. This is either from doing harm or being caught. This is uh, when something has been taken from them. This means they were having their cake and they were eating it too, which means they had endless cake. And you're taking the endless cake away from them. And that makes them angry. And they're mad. And people will then project their anger to keep you away from exposing the bullshit that yep. they just did. And so they're going to be keeping you distant from them having to be accountable. That's where anger comes in. You cannot have forgiveness when people are being angry to keep you away. Now, here's the one where the forgivers mess up the most. This is when you add shame to the, the equation. This is when the forgiver will not forgive or move on. They stay and punish over and over with a new sense of authority. That they now have the upper hand in the relationship and they will distribute justice. This is also toxic. There is no love. There is no honor. 
There is no golden rule. There is no grace and there is no room for forgiveness. If you are the person who feels like you can distribute shame and put someone down and belittle them and go, yeah, well, you're the cheater, aren't you? If you're going to keep bashing someone down for a mistake that they made that they're not repeating and they learn their lesson, neither of you will ever heal. You cannot heal when there's blame, shame, or judgment. It You cannot do it. Last thing, and this is where people go when it starts getting into the denial phase and never get out of it. This is where distraction comes in. And distraction is when you feel so bad inside of you that you can't accept the reality of what things are. And so you do anything to feel good about yourself, even for just a little bit, even if it costs you your health. This is where alcohol, drugs, um, prescription drugs, uh, porn, just anything to distract you from the reality of what things are. And ironically, you know, you start seeing the distraction also will come in from the lack of healing from the forgivers who go into a victim mentality also. This addiction is the addiction to misery. When people start getting a lot of attention and love because they were cheated on, they don't let that go. And that becomes toxic to their identity because now the value of their problems is higher than the value of the solution. You cannot let go if you believe that your pain is the reason that you get love. And this is where you see victim mentality become the addiction. If you ever start to give the solutions to somebody who's like this, they will just ignore you and go to the next person and tell the other person how bad their life is. So they get attention and they get the sympathy and people feel bad for them. And when they do that, they'll never be able to forgive because not forgiving is how they get love and attention now. It will not work. These are the pitfalls that people fall in when it comes to forgiveness. If you remove those steps and you simply go through acknowledgement, recognize, accept, agreements, know that the choice is there, and then go through a grace period of are we keeping our promise, then you can authentically forgive again because you're forgiving the promise, not the action. Stop bringing up cheating. Bring up, you made a mistake, we learned our lesson, let's never do that mistake again. That's what you're forgiving, not sleeping with somebody because you slept with people before you met each other. You're not holding that over each other's head. You're upset because you broke a promise, not had sex. And so stop bringing up the sex. It's we broke a promise, but let's make a new promise. It's the only way to heal.